Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the WordPress user roles and permission management. So let's just get started. First of all, what are the different types of users? Well, let's just put up a scenario that we have three different types of user that are visiting our website. The first user, the user 1, can create and manage other users, while the user 2 can only create post, and the user 3 is here only to view the post. So, depending upon the action that they are going to perform on the, our WordPress website, we are going to assign roles to these individual users. Now, what are the different types of users? Now, by default, in WordPress, you have four different types of users. The first is a subscriber, then the contributor, then author, and then editor. And by the way, this is also the level of access that they have. So subscriber has the level of access equal to one, contributor has two, author three, and editor four. But this does not mean that these are the only users that a WordPress website has. So for example, first of all, we have normal users that they are only there to visit our WordPress website. Then we have users with role, which we have explained. And then we have admin users that we are going to explain later on. Anyways, let's start off with the first role that is the subscriber. Now the subscriber role has the access level equal to one. The subscribers have only three different actions that they can perform. They can visit and read all of the post. They can create comments and post them under a specific post and that they can also create their own profile so that they can like and subscribe to a particular author or like and save a particular post. After that, we have the contributor. Now contributor also has three actions, but they are slightly different from the subscriber. So having the access level two, a contributor can read all of the posts. It can simply create their own post, not publish it, but create them. And then they can edit and delete their own post. Now, once the post has been accepted by the admin, the contributor's post would be published on the WordPress website. So that is why the name is contributor. At number three, we have the author role. Now, the author has much more privileges than the contributor. They can create an edit post. They can publish their post on their own without requiring an admin to do so. And they can delete their own post even if they are published. Remember, they can only delete their own post. They cannot delete the post of others. Now, the role of author is assigned to the authors who are responsible for creating content and nothing else. Next up, we have the editor role. With the access level of four, editors can create and edit all of the post, meaning that they can edit the post created by other users or other authors they can publish posts along with new pages and they can delete anyone's post or simply set them back into draft. The editor role is assigned to users who are responsible for overseeing the work of authors and contributors to the site. They can be considered admins to some extent, but they are not actually admins. Next up, we are going to be discussing about the admin roles. So there are two types of admin roles. We have the admin and the super admin. When it comes to admin, Admins are basically administrators that can do anything that they want on a WordPress website. They can create posts, delete posts, create users, delete users, create plugins, manage the theme and everything. They are mostly the WordPress owners or the WordPress creator. And this role, admin role, is the most powerful role when it comes to WordPress. And then we have something slightly similar but mainly different that is the super admin role. Now the super admin role is almost identical to admin role but the only difference is that it is only available on a multi-site WordPress. It has all the capabilities that a normal admin has but on the multiple sites. The super admin is considered to be super admin only when it owns more than one instance of WordPress. Anyways, these were all of the roles and permissions of WordPress and if you still want to learn more about them or want to learn more in detail knowledge about them, you additionally, you can check out the WordPress single sign-on plugin that is developed by the WordPress security experts. Now this plugin comes with a lot of different SSO features which are WordPress single sign-on, attribute mapping, protecting your website because this is developed by the security experts and auto redirecting of SSO and most importantly it has the WordPress role mapping. It even has the multi-environment support for migration, development, staging and production stages. It has single logout and it can be used to automate the user creation. So the link for this WordPress SSO plugin and the blog post for SSO plugin would be in the description box as well. With that, if you have learned anything new, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.